guys welcome back to my channel in today's video we're just gonna be having a kind of mukbang type of video i'm gonna have lunch and uh, i'm just gonna be talking like crazy like i usually do i think for mukbang videos i've seen a lot of people that eat like huge amounts of food and i'm not gonna do that i can eat a lot for sure but i can't eat like that much and i don't understand how some people are so skinny and eating like five servings of food or something i like I'm like, is that normal? I don't know. I mean, I guess that's kind of nice for them because whatever I eat, I for sure see it on my waistline. So, you know, I can't really get away with doing that. Not that I would want to. I think I'm satisfied with the fact that my appetite is not as large as that because then that would be very costly. That's a lot of money to spend on food. Oh my gosh, my hair is crazy. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I just feel like uh, I never have a good hair day. I don't know why. I don't know why that is. I'm a good person. I don't hurt anyone. I just want to have a good hair day sometimes. Anyway, so if you like watching videos like this, just stay tuned and don't judge my eating. Okay, so for today's food, I'm gonna be eating ropa vieja con arroz negros. So here's the food. It's just rice, ropa vieja, um, black beans, and then this is just some hot sauce that I made the other day. It's more like a Peruvian style hot sauce. I don't know if Cubans eat hot sauce to be honest. I'm not sure. Not sure how that works. Dennis made it yesterday and it turned out really good. So we have a little bit of leftovers. I mean, a lot of leftovers, I should say. So I'm going to be eating that today. And for a drink, I don't know how many times I tell myself I'm not going to drink soda anymore. And I would say, okay, next time I'm not going to buy soda. I'm not going to buy soda. And even if then it's by said, I'm not gonna drink it. But I always end up drinking it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like this. But anyways, for today, I thought, you know what? I think this kind of food, since it's a little bit more on the heavy side, would go really well with a carbonated drink. So I'm gonna be drinking a Coke. For me, Coke is my favorite soda. Um, I also learned to enjoy Dr. Pepper. And of course, I love Inca Cola. I don't know if you guys know, but Inca Cola is a Peruvian drink. And to make it cuter, I'm putting it in a mason jar, so I feel a little bit more fancy. I really prefer sodas or cokes um, from the glass bottles. So for some reason they call it Mexican Coke here, but I mean, this is all over Latin America, so I don't know if I would say it's a Mexican Coke. It's just Coke in a glass bottle, which used to be even here back in the day. But yeah, I think a lot of Hispanic things in the US, they use associated with Mexico because obviously Mexico is the biggest and I think only Hispanic country that's bordering the USA. So the US takes a lot of Hispanic things as being Mexican when it's actually just a general Hispanic thing. Okay guys, well, I hope this setting isn't too awkward. Um, I don't have a lot of space in my studio apartment so i have to try to maneuver the tripod in a way that you can still see my face a little bit and then the food most importantly so anyways let's try this food i mean i already tried it yesterday but uh, like the first bite of every meal is always the best mm -hmm. so good so good i swear Ugh, carbonated soda, I don't know why it's so good. Like, it shouldn't be this good. So I'm filming a couple of videos today. And I'm kind of taking advantage of the fact that Dennis isn't here. Um, he went to the office today. And today is Friday, so technically I should be working. Um, however, I've been working from home for the past two months now. Even though I'm working from home, and I don't know how everybody else's um, work from home situation is. I really have to work quite a lot. Um, it happened that I guess you could say my manager quit like literally right before the mandated work from home situation started. So I think initially they were gonna hire more people for my department, but because of the situation, a lot of our retail partners, they have all had to close down for the past months and that's affected our sales quite a lot. I'm in the sales department. I don't like to say that I'm in the sales department because I hate sales, but okay, I shouldn't say I hate sales because that's very negative. I just don't think sales is my forte or my favorite thing to do. 
it, we don't do cold calling at all, at all, at all, at all. Uh, we do more like business to business type of account management. So in a way it's a bit easier, in a way it's not. Because cold calling, I don't think I can see myself ever doing that. It just sounds so painful to do day in and day out over and over again. We have to deal with a lot of big corporate type of meetings where we discuss margins and stuff like that. Not that I'm involved in the margin negotiation at all. Um, that's like way above my pay grade. But we do have to discuss launches and marketing strategies and you know the right dates on certain programs that we want to do the right allocation of product so we just talk a lot about those things um, when my boss left uh, although I had some knowledge about those kind of discussions with one of our biggest partners that we're working with right now it wasn't nearly enough information for me to take over and I don't think initially I was told that I was gonna take over unofficially I am taking over pretty much all of her responsibilities the fact that this uh, situation is ongoing I don't think they wanted to hire more people if sales weren't gonna pick up anyways I'm pretty sure they're trying to save as much money as they can until things stabilize so hopefully once things get a little bit more normal and I think we're starting to see things normalize once again once we still see those steps happening we should definitely be able to to afford to hire more people because believe it or not there's just one person in my team so it's me, it's just, it's just me, myself and I. The sort of departments that are helping me, you know, complete the things that I, that need to be completed, including marketing, logistics, supply chain, all of them, they're getting together to help the company to really. And it's working out for now, I just don't think long term it's gonna work out because it used to be a department of four people, then it went to three, then it went to two, then it's just me. It wouldn't be fair to anyone if they're left alone just like that in a very short period of time and for the expectation to be that they're gonna be like that for who knows how long. So I definitely hope that upper management is already having a plan set in place as far as like hiring more people. Like I really hope so. You know when I've watched mukbangs in the past, some people make food look really delicious, kind of like you kind of want to eat what they're eating. And some people make the food, personally speaking, the food doesn't seem that appetizing. I think it's really the way that some people eat their food. I don't think I personally, not that it matters to be honest, this is such a random thought, but I don't think I have the most appealing way of eating. I think I move my mouth way too much. That's why whenever I wear uh, lipstick, and I go out to eat, my lipstick always ends like over here, over here, over here. I don't know how I move my mouth for that to happen, but it happens. Other people are very delicate, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word, but just delicate and precise when they put the food in their mouth. And they don't let like all the greasiness, it just doesn't look bad. I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I just hope my eating at least is not turning you off. So yeah, like I was saying, today is Friday, so then it's going to work. I stayed in. Um, I'm supposed to be working, but I took the day off yesterday and today because it was my birthday. I know that I had any plans to go anywhere, obviously, because we're all social distancing, but I just didn't want to have to work on my birthday. <laughs> I don't think I've ever... I, I've tried to always take the day off on my birthday for as long as I can remember, and I don't take days off unless I want to go on a trip. Usually I save all of my PTO hours as much as I can until the day that I've decided to go somewhere, somewhere big, like another country or maybe another city. Like I really like traveling. Sometimes I think I like traveling the most because of the anticipation of looking forward to the actual trip. Not that the actual trip is not fun, but I think I just feel so excited and hopeful of all the new adventures that I'm gonna have that even though the trip only lasts for a week, I'm just excited for a month or so. The planning process is very tedious because you have to plan so many things, you have to put so many things into it. And all the trips that we've had so far, me and Dennis at least, I've always planned them from beginning to end. Dennis has helped me, but not really much, just because I think I'm a little bit more, I don't wanna say controlling, but maybe he would say controlling. Let's say controlling. A little controlling with the things that I want to do and the things that I want to plan. Dennis is so chill that he'll go with the plan. And maybe I'll make a video about that even though I'm sure there's thousands of videos out there about the topic. 
uh, but you really have to plan the distance from where you're staying, you know, kind of compare pricing on where you want to stay, if you want to go from city to city, the transportation, if you're going to take flights in between during your trip, let's say. When we, when we went to Spain, I wanted to go to at least three cities, so we went to Barcelona. Another city in the south that I just can't remember right now, but I'm going to put it on the video right here, then to Madrid, and then to Cuenca. So it was four places. Um, Cuenca was like a day trip because it was a small, tiny town close to Madrid. But just planning that, just planning that movement, it's a lot of work, guys. You have to plan where you're living from, um, what time can you leave. Let's say your Airbnb or hotel has checkout by 10 a.m. Then that means that ideally you should have your transportation ready to leave with you before then. So that way you don't have to spend any time stranded in a way. So then you also have to make sure that you are right to your destination in the appropriate time to, you know, enjoy your next stay in. I think it's a bit hard to just describe in words. I probably need more graphics than that. You have to just plan the arrival and the party times very well so that you are not wasting time and money, at least not too much of it. I always go in tangents, guys, so I'm so sorry. I'm, 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 I tend to do this a lot and then I forget what I was initially trying to convey. Um, but I was trying to get at in the beginning was the fact that today's my day off, but I decided to use my day off instead of just chilling, I don't know, doing my nails. Not that I ever do my nails, but you know, something like that. Doing a self-care type of day or just chilling and watching Netflix or reading or just doing something of that regard. I decided to just uh, film some videos. Um, I think the filming portion of on my YouTube channel is the most time consuming for me. Editing takes the most time, but I think filming takes the most effort. Because you know, normally if I'm just staying home, I would just be in my pajamas. I probably would wouldn't even wash my face and I don't like that I wish I had a better routine I keep telling myself you need to have a better routine no matter what even if you're not going anywhere you have to like start washing your face put in a skincare routine walking Cusco on time all of that stuff I did a long walk with Cusco today a little bit longer than normal I mean as long as I do that I feel good because I think Cusco's health and his walks have to be timely that's the most important thing I need to start taking better care of myself. Anyways, I decided to wake up as soon as Dennis left, um, wash my face, take Cusco out, uh, put makeup on, nothing crazy but just some makeup to make me look decent and I wanted to film. So I started filming already and I did one and then I started filming a second video. It's more of like a reaction type of video and I think my intentions were good, but now that I'm in the middle of filming that video, I, I realized how much I didn't anticipate for the length of it. So I decided to take a pause from that video and film a eat with me type of mukbang video. Before this whole pandemic thing happened, what I would do is that he doesn't travel every week, but he does travel a lot. So on those days that he would be traveling, I would take the chance to film because I still feel very self-conscious just talking normally um, in front of the camera when he's here and we have a very small space so it's not like I have another room where I can just film and do all of these kind of things so I would have to do it in the bedroom area which doesn't really have a door so he would still be able to listen and he wears headphones but I still feel like he probably can hear me a little bit and he just tries to be polite and nice with me so he says that no I can't hear anything but I think he can so the whole time that I'm talking to myself pretty much to myself even though it's to a camera I in the back of my head I'm like man I sound so dumb I sound so so childish and he's probably hearing me out how cringy you know like he's probably like man like she's too much i think a lot of these things he wouldn't think even if he's able to overhear what i'm actually saying in these videos that i film i don't think he would ever think negatively of me but i think in my head i just can't help but go towards the negative sometimes so to avoid that today i decided to film while he was gone just that i can feel a little bit more free on what i wanted to say my god, this food is so good, guys. I was watching the Cuban documentary yesterday, too, and it's so interesting. Cuban people look so fun and so nice. One of my first jobs was for a Cuban company, actually. It was a tiny family-owned company. They would do seasonings, so like meat seasonings, adobo, chicken seasonings, all of that sort of thing. And you know the owners and the owner's daughter were Cuban, so they would bring some Cuban food, and one of them was this one. 
They were so nice and kind. They treated their employees really well from what I saw. Again, I don't want to generalize, but there was this very nice lady. She was Mexican. Everybody who was working there was Hispanic, I think, except for one girl. So in LA, if you meet someone who's Hispanic, 90% is probably going to be Mexican or of Mexican descent. And then maybe 8% might be Central American. And then um, the rest will be like a combination of South Americans and, you know, from the Caribbean. Caribbean? I'm from the Caribbean. Caribbean? I'm not sure how you say that actually in English. I know how to say it in Spanish, but in, in English it sounds a little funny. Um, but anyways, maybe the fact that Mexican people are very nationalistic and they love their culture, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think they're a little territorial. At least that was the impression that I've gotten with living in Southern California for the past 15 years now. So anyways, when the Cuban owners would sometimes bring a cook, and it was a Cuban cook, just so that they can try the new seasonings they were working on. Um, obviously, there were a lot of leftovers, because all they were doing just tasting, so a lot of us had a chance to try the food. And the, the Mexican ladies, who well, they were very nice to me and everything, but they were always very dismissive and kind of rude about the food making faces about it kind of in a way kind of saying that it smelled bad that it tasted bad and i never had cuban food until then you know peruvian food it's i don't know if you know but peruvian food is very good but that doesn't mean that i think other people's food would automatically be bad i mean of course there's a chance that a food actually is bad um, but I still wouldn't make faces or say comments like that. Um, I don't know why, but I'm very careful when it comes to food. Whenever somebody gives me food, I'll take it. If I don't like it, I'll try my best not to get any more. So maybe if they keep offering me, I'll say again, okay, yeah. And I don't know if this is right or not, but I always say it's good no matter what. Because somebody already put the effort of making food and inviting you to have the food. I wouldn't want to criticize it, in all honesty. I just wouldn't want to be the one to do it. I mean, there might be a chance that one day I'm going to come across a food that's so bad I'm not going to be able to pretend that it's not. So far, I've never had food that's really been really that bad that somebody has made for me and that I just didn't want to accept it. The fact that these ladies wouldn't be cordial or just decent about their reaction just really gave me a bad taste of how some people uh, tend to be. The Mexican ladies would always bring food and sometimes they would give me a little bit. Sometimes I wanted to be petty and kind of pretend that I didn't like it and make the kind of reaction that they did to uh, the Cuban owners and see how they like it. And I wanna kind of to show them, see, you guys wouldn't like it. You guys wouldn't like seeing that someone is putting down the food that you brought and that you made for someone else in that way. You wouldn't want to see that happening, you know? But of course I never did that. And I'm not the biggest fan of Mexican food to be honest. Not that I don't think it's bad at all. I don't think it's bad food at all. It's just not something that I crave. Like I'm never like, man, I want to go to a Mexican restaurant and have some Mexican food. I think it's happened maybe three times since I've moved here and it's been 15 years. Um, but if somebody wants to go to a Mexican restaurant, I'm all down. I think the food is, is good, it's just not something that I ever crave. And maybe it could be because I didn't grow up with Mexican food. So you could argue, oh, because you're not used to it, it's not like you're gonna crave it. But there are other foods that I've only tried here when I was in the US and that I, now I love. Every now and then I have to have, for example, Japanese ramen. I like Italian pastas. A lot of the pastas like the carbonara, uh, meat sauce, I make my, my own type of pastas and they're all like a staple in our menu every week. Hawaiian pizza. I know some people hate pineapples in their pizza, but the first time I tried it, it was here in the US and I just fell in love with it. I don't know what happened. And mushrooms. I don't think in Peru I've ever had mushrooms, but when I came here, when I started eating it in different types of meals, I was like, man, this is awesome. I love it. It's amazing. Same with Korean. It was like a type of cuisine that I had to get used to. At first I didn't like it. I thought it was so plain and so unseasoned almost. And it wasn't my favorite for sure. But then after a while, 
I actually started craving Korean food. I mean, not every dish or anything like that, but some some dishes, I started craving it. Chinese food, I mean, Chinese food is big and I think the whole world. So yeah, Chinese food every now and then. With Mexican food, it's just, I think not that it's a bad type of cuisine at all, because it's not. It's just not something that I crave. Same with sushi. I feel like people would kill for sushi. And it's not something that I enjoy that much. I mean, I mean, if somebody wants to go for sushi, I'll go and have sushi with them. It's fine. But I don't think I've ever said to myself, man, I really could go for sushi now. Let's go, you know, like my treat. I mean, nothing like that. I don't know why. And I don't have a problem with not liking certain foods that everybody likes. I know for some reason, some people think it's okay to say, oh, I don't like Indian food. Mm, I don't like Mexican food. Ugh. Ugh, Chinese food smells bad. But then for some reason, sushi is something that everyone just has the need to say that they love sushi. Because if you don't say that you like sushi, then you're not part of the cool kids club or something. And I think that's so stupid. Everybody's entitled to like whatever they like. Just be polite about it, you know? Just don't put people's food down like a lot of people's food is their pride and joy they love it so how would you like it if something that you adore and love you hear other people trash it it doesn't feel good you know it just doesn't feel good you know i actually kind of like this video style because <laughs> i'm eating i'm enjoying my food and i'm not eating too fast what i would normally do is just turn on netflix or something and then just stay on the couch and eat and I would eat so fast and then since I'm eating so fast I think my stomach probably thinks that oh man I think you didn't eat enough food because you ate it so fast that means that you have to go get more food like let's say I'm watching a YouTube video and I start watching it and then the clip hasn't ended and I don't have food anymore I'll go get some more food come back and try to finish my food as the clip ends I don't know it's stupid but I think watching TV which is what I usually do whenever I'm eating kind of makes me eat more so maybe this is better so I, I feel like I'm just talking to my friend you know my very quiet friend of course because I'm the one doing all the talking but I still enjoy it like I really do you know what I've been watching a lot lately of it's documentaries it's actually mini documentaries that I find on YouTube and I think I really like the ones that deal with society and culture the most a lot of the ones I've been watching are about India China and the Philippines it just happened to be recommended to me so after I watch one I think more got recommended and it's kind of crazy to me to see how different cultures find their new normal because for sure the ones that I've been watching about India it's about just how people with very low resources are able to survive in very big cities of India. I think this happens all over the world where immigrants from provinces or small regions, I guess, kind of say in the countryside here in the US, go to the big cities and try to make a life for themselves. And they live in like the utmost poverty levels and they're still trying to manage a way to live their day-to-day -day lives and survive pretty much. In a way, it makes me really open my eyes to all the realities that are out there in the world. I come from a place where poverty, of course, over there is a prevalent topic. You see it everywhere. And although I think for Peru, at least, things are getting a little better, it's not getting done fast enough to really alleviate people's suffering on a big scale, at least. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. I finished the food, so I just wanted to put everything away. But yeah, like I was saying, I've been really into mini documentaries about India and China. I think I watched one about Morocco, um, Philippines. Yeah, it's, it's extremely interesting to see how everybody in the world are really trying hard to get themselves to live a fulfilling life, whatever that means for them. And it definitely makes me appreciate what I have right now. I think for a lot of people, maybe I don't have much. And that's okay. I think my perspective is that even if I don't have much, if I really appreciate the little bit that I have, I'm gonna be happy. And definitely watching this kind of documentaries make me so thankful for what I do have. Instead of wanting to have more 
because other people have it or I see people buying cars and houses and going on trip after trip after trip having all of this electronics the latest beauty products and all the clothes in the world all the shoes in the world the biggest closets like there's always going to be someone who has more than I do and and I think trying to chase a life that's not mine just because other people have it is not going to make me happy ever it's always going to be a constant race and I don't want to be racing with anybody I want to just be racing with myself I have I think a very clear goal of what I want to do with my life I want to work hard in whatever it is that I do I want to save a lot of money, I want to be financially independent, I want to own my own house, have a family, be able to help my family, especially my family in Peru. I know that money is not everything, but of course money does help and there's a lot of people out there that just with a little bit you can help them. Uh, my dream is to help my family with their education. If you really study for the right thing, it can really make your life so different than if you never got the education that's needed and hopefully people could also pass it forward so if I help one of them they can maybe help their brothers or sisters and it's just like a chain of good deeds you know there's also besides my family there's also a lot of people that are suffering out there in the world there's a lot of foundations that I want to help I'm very passionate about animals I wish I could have my own shelter especially in Peru. I don't think there's enough funds over there to really support the many stray dogs that are over there. So I would love to one day have something like that. I would love to help my parents out. And of course, I want to be able to not have to depend on a, you know, eight to five type of job in order to sustain my life. And I want the same for my boyfriend. I don't want him to feel forced to go to work every day, even though I think he really likes his work, which is great, but if it ever comes a time when he's tired of doing the same thing or he just doesn't get along with his new boss, yeah, a lot of things are out of our control when we work for someone else. So being able to have the option to not work, it's always going to be a blessing. So I want to get to the point, of course, where we are able to say, you know what, I think this is enough, I'm not gonna work anymore, and I'm gonna concentrate on a passion project of mine. That's what I wanna do. I don't think, even if I become financially independent, I'm just gonna stop working. I think I'm always gonna wanna work. I'm always gonna want to give something to the world, in a way. I might not be a scientist who can cure cancer, or you know, or an astronaut who can find new worlds out there, or a doctor or a Nobel Prize winner, but that doesn't mean that there's no way for me to leave an imprint in the world with something good that I can give. I think every little thing that we can do for others is always gonna be it's always gonna be a positive, no matter how small it is. So I definitely wanna be able to do that. So anyway, guys, the topic, of course, got very serious very quickly, but then again, that's me. I think I'm not good at doing small talk. Um, I've never been good at that. So that's why I think I'm a little social inadequate inadequate um, I'm gonna spell that word but I'm trying to say that I'm not the most sociable person in the world I don't think a lot of people when they first meet me they get a good vibe from me necessarily not that they think that I'm a bad person I just don't think they get a connection with me because I think when you first meet people the majority of times you do have to be able to do small talk and you know open up yourself uh, rather quickly and maybe not be so deep where it makes the person uncomfortable at least here in the US. Uh, that's been my experience again with uh, being here for 15 years now. I've realized that that's just how society works and I don't think I've ever quite gotten used to that. When I really get comfortable with you I tend to be a little bit too into my conversations. I'm not trying to say that I'm the deepest person out there but I do like to talk about maybe heavier topics than just the regular oh how's work like that sort of conversation I, I for some unfortunate reason i'm just not able to do so in exchange you get this from me this kind of just random conversations about sometimes nothing at all and sometimes pretty much everything at once but I, I really hope that you enjoyed this video in one way or another I don't know if I'm ever gonna make it big on YouTube or not even big I don't know if I'm ever gonna even have a decent amount of followers at any point it's almost like I'm starting a 10k race when everybody already started 
two hours ago like you know there's no way for me to ever catch up but that's okay I'm enjoying filming videos I'm enjoying editing my videos thinking what else can I talk about and what other topics could be interesting and maybe one day rewatching myself and rewatching what was I thinking back then when I turned 31 when I was 30 I honestly wish that I had started this when I was you know in my early 20s if not teens just because I was a big fan of YouTube back then and I would watch everything I would watch everything and obviously I probably just didn't have the resources or the imagination to think that I could do one of those things as well just like everybody else was doing back then but it's not even because I wish I had started sooner because maybe now I would have at least a hundred thousand followers or more it's not because of that honestly it's because I wish that I could see myself back then sometimes I feel sorry for who I used to be back in the day because I was such a lost person like I didn't know where I was going I didn't know what I was doing I felt so lonely so alone but I still had all these thoughts in my head I had so many things that I wanted to get out there into the world to talk to someone I just didn't have anyone and I think if I had had a camera back then or just the guts to just do it I I would love to see what I was thinking back then I would love to kind of hear my thoughts from back then and see how much I've changed you can always just treasure your past self whatever that past self was even if you don't think you were your best version yet or you know you were ashamed of how you used to dress how you used to do your makeup it's still a part of you it's still something that you should treasure that for better or for worse it's what's made you who you are today so anyway guys i will stop this right now because if not i can go on for hours and hours and hours but anyways guys i hope that for better or for worse you somehow were able to enjoy this video I can't wait to film my next video and I hope that some of you are able to watch that video as well. Don't forget to like this video if you like this sort of, you know, type of talking, eating with me type of videos. And subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I upload a new video. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you on my next video.